hashtag here, use the ATL twig if you want to use it. Uh, I just made that up, so don't feel like you have to. Uh, DCATL is uh, the master hashtag if you want to set anything up. Um, the original class this is based off of is using twig to do template engine in Drupal 8, uh, which was a session at Drupal Con uh, run by Jim Ramp and Fabian Franz and John Albert Wilkins. If you saw that, uh, the biggest difference between this class and that one is that this class is not going to have to implore you to uh, join the sprint to get the twig in the core because it's already there. <laughs> so hi, I'm Dan. Uh, I'm the lead developer at Survivor Incorporated. Uh, I've been there for three or four years now. Uh, we do a lot of PHP development work. Hosting as well, we also do managed services. Uh, you'll notice it does not say design on it. Uh, I don't do a lot of design, but what I do is a lot of implementation of design, uh, which is why I'm kind of giving this talk. Uh, I'm super excited about uh, I started with Drupal 6. Uh, Drupal 6 uh, is the basis of several of our other sites, and continues to be the basis of several of our other sites, uh, but we've been developing through Drupal, Drupal 7 and now moving to Drupal 8. Uh, as far as community involvement, uh, I've been to uh, Drupal Con. What's that? Uh, I've been to uh, Drupal Con Denver, uh, Portland. I was here at uh, Drupal Camp Atlanta uh, this past year. Uh, if you want to tweet me, I'm at Dan If you want to tweet my company, I'm at Sabah. This is Twig. Twig is available at http colon slash slash twig dot uh, You do well if you intend to use Twig to remember that, just because it's going to be very handy. Let's talk about what Twig is. Twig is a templating engine. But what that means for the uninitiated is that uh, you'll be using it to sort of describe your markup. Uh, Twig is going to be holding your markup. Whereas, Twig's going to be holding all your markup in the same way that CSS holds all your styling, in the same way that PHP now is going to be holding your logic separately from your markup. Uh, Twig basically lets you change up variables uh, throughout your markup and display them on the site. Twig is also now part of the Google 8 core. It was a very recent addition to Drupal 8. Uh, it's finished during, or its implementation, official implementation, I should say, was finished during the sprints at Drupal Con Portland. Uh, the good part about that is it's in core and it's not coming back out, so you don't have to worry about not having Twig when uh, Drupal 8 finally releases. It will definitely be Twig is also started by the creator of Symphony, uh, Fabian Potentier. Forgive me if I'm saying that completely incorrectly because I have no idea. Uh, that's a good thing because Symphony is, uh, components of Symphony are actually going to be present throughout the relay. Um, so having a theme engine, with a template engine, alongside of uh, components that are in form already, that are made by the same guy, uh, very clean implementation across the board. Most importantly, Twig is not radically different from PHP template, which is the current templating engine in Drupal 7 and prior. Uh, PHP template, if you want to call it a template engine, is really just PHP calling specific variables to uh, come to life in, in your file HTML output. Um, obviously, there's going to be new syntax, new control structures, and we'll go over that a little bit. Uh, but the biggest difference is that PHP template provides you the ability to pull just about anything you wanted from you could run whatever PHP you wanted within the template. Uh, that's gone. You're not going to have that anymore. Uh, that's going to be a good thing. Hopefully, you'll see uh, as I proceed with time. Finally, Twig is super cool. <laughs> Using Twig, uh, I want to go over just the basics of what uh, Twig markup kind of looks like. First and foremost, if you want to uh, print a variable, and you wrap it in double curly braces. So you can see that I am printing the cool thing here uh, inside of this handbook. And keep in mind that Twig basically is your HTML with uh, little bits of Twig components shoved in there. So you'll, you'll see that kind of throughout the uh, So, uh, 
some of the items that you pull through the template, uh, you may or may not know if you're already a gamer, uh, you know, you've got some items within that. So if you're pulling an entire node, say, you may just want to field within that node. The way to access that entry is to just use a, a dot. So you drill down into your cool thing, you find the off and off, so you can prove that out. If you want to do a template style comment, where you just are commenting on something that's not going to have that comment appear on your final HTML output, you can use the curly brace and the pound sign, or hash, as you would call that. And then you have your control elements. So your if statements, for example, if you want to use one of those, you will wrap them in a curly brace with a percent sign. So you've got your if statements, if notices, uh, important is present, then you know, print out that notice is important within the item I'm pointing on the screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, if you have if notices that important is present, then you can print that out, and then you can just end it if after that is our There's a whole bunch of different control structures. Uh, this, for example, is for you. Um, if you're not used to coding, which if you use a PHP template, you should be a little bit, but if you're not used to it, uh, it's, it's going to be a little bit different and you're going to have a few more options available to you, but uh, if you have been coding in the past and you have been using PHP, then a lot of these structures will look, look very familiar and probably a little bit more readable. Um, for Jam in top 20 of the, of the disco hits, uh, you can print out the, the Jam name and the number for you, and that's how you get like, a, a list. So let's do a demo real quick and take a look at some of the code. I can set this up properly. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see this in the back. Okay. Um, this is your regular page <coughs> PBL.php. This is what most of you are probably very familiar with, all too familiar with. Uh, you see that it's, it's all PHP code. Uh, this is straight out of the Arctic theme, so uh, this is one of the, the core themes. You'll see you've got, uh, we'll, we'll take a closer look at the, the logo structure. You've got your if statement here. Uh, you'll print out each one of your variables as you need them. Uh, you'll get your, your href, your title, everything basically printed out in PHP. It's a similar state of affairs in the tweak version. This is actually the tweak version of the same file in the Bartik theme for this date. So you see you've got your if statement here as part of the control. Uh, and then you print out your front page, you print out your home. Uh, I'll discuss a little bit later on uh, what this pipe means. Uh, but essentially it's a filter. Uh, and uh, you go all the way down to your end of down here. So it's very similar to the whole structure. Uh, it's a little bit more limited because it's not straight PHP, but it's also going to be more um, useful just because it, it's not PHP. Uh, all right. I'm not sure if you can get any back. Okay. Yeah. yeah, if anybody can't hear me, then just wave uh, copiously because uh, I won't know. All right, Twig is super cool. For real, even the Fonz agrees. I'd like to say other people wrote these slides, but they are all mine. All right, there's a whole bunch of reasons Twig is super cool. First and foremost, it's basically HTML. If you are proficient with HTML, which is essentially just a markup language that lets people know uh, how code is supposed to be arranged, then you are going to be good with Twig because all you're doing is filling in the blanks in that markup. Twig is also super cool because it keeps the logic out of the template. Basically, you take all of your markup and you put it separately from your PHP. Uh, keeping that sort of divided and separate is very handy in making, making sure that uh, you don't introduce security errors, you don't introduce uh, problems with output. Uh, keeping those separate is, is kind of what the whole implementation of Twig is about. Another reason Twig is super cool is that uh, by and large it's actually shorter than PHP. Uh, in this particular example uh, that is given on the Twig site, uh, you're escaping the variables. So you've got 
in PHP, you've got the regular variable, and then you're like, oh no, I have to escape this out. Uh, so you have to add HTML special chars, plus all the bits arguments, as well as the variable names. It's a big long mess. To do the same thing with Twig, you just add this filter. You, add, you say, this is the, the regular output, and then you have the bar E for escape it out. Um, you might not even have to add that, and I'll, I'll go over that a little bit later when I talk about security, but uh, uh, there are actually wrappers you can put around things like this, or global settings you can set that might escape everything. Uh, but escaping is kind of a special example. Uh, continuing along that line, it's also got some handy uh, syntax for using templates. Uh, for example, if you're iterating over an array, like you've got a bunch of users within your uh, user group, uh, you can print all those users out, but say you don't have a user to that group, then you automatically have this sort of else statement that you can use uh, very cleanly to say that no users have been found. One of the best parts of Twig, in my opinion, is that it's completely documented. Uh, that twig.sensiolab.org site that I mentioned previously has the full documentation as to what Twig is. If you ever try to use Render or try to dig around Google that work to find uh, the, the different levels of templates you can try to use. Uh, you'll understand how important it is that having something like this template engine come in already documented is excellent. Uh, and the documentation is very clean, very well organized. It's not user editable, which is something that uh, was nice about Google that work, but there's going to be a whole bunch of Twig sites pop up, and I promise. Uh, that'll let you know all about the, the cool tips and hacks that you can do. Um, one of the reasons why Twig is really getting put in place is, that to, it, is because it's a lot more secure than using PHP for your, your templates. Uh, there's just so much you can do after <laughs> calling in your PHP templates. Uh, uh, but what you can do with Twig that you can't do in PHP uh, right off the bat is output escaping. Uh, I showed you earlier how uh, you can do it on a single uh, individual output, but you can also, as I mentioned, uh, wrap it in a block. Uh, it's got output escaping globally. Uh, you can do it on an individual template if you want to, so that everything on the template can be escaped. Uh, Twig also has a neat feature of a sandbox. You can turn that sandbox on globally and give your themers uh, if you're a developer, give your themers a limited amount of access to functions and uh, filters and different things that they can use to sort of keep that code as safe as you need it to be while it's being worked on. So if you don't want anybody using anything like a function that might uh, delete all your content or something for, for some of your then you can sort of uh, keep that out. Uh, also, because it's not PHP, you can't do something to be like, Add a add a secret query to a, a template that's going to delete anything. Um, people say that it's it's never going to happen and they've never seen it, but I have and it's awful and you don't want that on your code. Something else that's really neat is that Twig is easy to debug. Uh, when you have a problem with the Twig template. It uh, gives you a real simple message uh, that lets you know exactly where the problem is. Uh, let me show you for this. So say I have my node template here, and just to sort of follow it, I will I clear these brackets on the end. I'll save it. I can pull it up over here. This is a, a local group of agents at all. It's fun, so not going to cooperate. Uh, right. It's strange to say, but in a perfect world, this would break. And it would not only, <laughs> not only the, the line number of the, the fault, but also the specific template file of where the problem is. Leave that for now.
Another reason Twig is exciting is that it's fast. And this is wildly debatable. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, different articles on this. The, the research that I pulled for this particular slide uh, that shows it slightly slower than PHP, but faster than everything else, is pulled from Fabian uh, Potentiary's own blog. Uh, so that's, that's going to be a little biased. He made it, obviously. Um, He's, he, he, goes, he actually goes to say, uh, most template engines compile the templates out of uh, straight PHP code, so the speed of lexing, parsing, and compiling is not that relevant. What matters is the speed of evaluation. Uh, that depends on how you're looking at it. But suffice to say that once Twig is compiled, uh, his research shows that it's actually uh, about as fast as just having real PHP. It delivers clean enough PHP to run, just like if you had templated something out as PHP. Uh, I've seen other research that shows it's pretty comparable to Smarty, who's another template engine that's out there. Uh, but it's, I haven't run the test myself on it. I can't really uh, go along and say who, who's right on that. Uh, a great thing about Twig is that it's already in the IDEs you use every day. Uh, if you don't already have uh, Twig package within the IDE. Uh, text is package is available. I, I got one just the other day for Sublime Text. That's what I'm using to make my code a little bit easier. Um, but it's available in everything from Vim and NetBeans, uh, PHP Storm. It's all over the place and it's going to be very simple to uh, actually get rolling if you want to start coding with it. Something that I love as more of a developer than a gamer is that you do not have to use quite so much code with Twig. Uh, something that's in place now, which should be used uh, from now until forever, honestly, is something called blocks. And the easiest way to demonstrate this is to show it to you. All right, so we've got a <coughs> node template here, and then we've got a node article template. I won't show you that just yet, but. Uh, suffice to say, the node template is a full Bartic node template. Uh, you've got all this great, you know, header printing, uh, you know, article attributes, all this great stuff. Uh, something special though down here is what's called a block. And just before I get any further, uh, I know that they may be working on changing the word block uh, because Drupal obviously already has blocks within it. They're kind of leaning towards calling this a code block and the other kind of block a layout block but they're not really sure how to address the confusion because Block was already used by Twig and it was already used by Drupal and now those two systems are coming together. Uh, so there's just going to be two kinds of blocks for a while, unfortunately. This kind of block, though, uh, allows you to inject content into a different uh, template. So this block right here uh, called uh, Cool Footer is something that is just showing a neat footer on the bottom of a node. And if we take a look at the site, you can see that it just injects this really cool footer down here. Now, say you want to have a different template, use this code, but only change what's present in that block. You can do that. So I've got a, a sub-template for just the article content type. And this is all it is, as opposed to that whole massive uh, template for the uh, entire node and copying that over, just changing one little line. I can make this template just extend this other template and change what's in that block. Uh, not only that, but I can also call this parent function right here, which will pull the content from the original block and post replacing it, and then just append the new content to it. So you can see that I have an article over here, which just has an intended content. So that's going to save a lot in the way of uh, how much code your site actually has. Your site actually has uh, building it. Uh, a lot of code can be reused, and that's another step uh, in the future process of sort of rolling out Twig is making sure that a lot of this code gets reused uh, across the entire Drupal core installation. All right, have you ever gone into a template? particularly a Drupal template, and had a piece of data that you did not know what it was. Uh, you probably know the exact one that you've done with here. You may have an object, you may have a string, you may have an array. It could be an array within an array. You don't know. 
But what's cool about Twig is that using that little dot, you can fish out whatever you need without having to know what's inside of that variable. You don't need to know if it's an object. You don't need to know if it's an array. Basically, you say no dot field, and it pulls it out no matter what it is. So very handy, very easy, very excited. Along the same lines, we're kind of smoothing out how output works. No longer do you have to remember, oh, should I print here? Do I need to use the render function? Do I need to call a whole bunch of variable arguments for the render function? It doesn't matter anymore. You just have those uh, double brackets or double uh, curly braces around it, and ta-da, it works. Uh, one of the really neat things about Twig is that it's not just used on Drupal. Uh, because it's sort of something that's been folded into the Drupal template and theme system, uh, it's been out there and people have been using it. And it's also very similar to a lot of other things out there. Uh, Smarty, I'm told, is very similar. I've not used it personally. Uh, but people who understand basic programming languages, you know, people who have used Python, uh, they're going to be people that are going to be able to come to Drupal and already know how to build templates. Um, with Twig, so that's very cool. You kind of kind of think of it as community building using uh, uh, an existing code base. Uh, there's a couple of reasons that Twig is cool, but not cool yet. Uh, Twig could be even cooler. Uh, for example, Twig could be used on the front end as well, since it's sort of a since it's not stuck to Drupal and just used by Drupal by itself. Uh, you could use it technically to pull a piece of AJAX content like a, a JSON object uh, from within your Drupal site. And then on the front end, using JavaScript, inject all of that content into the same Twig template that you are actually using to render the content in the first place. Um, so reuse of templates along those lines is very exciting. I think there's actually a library out there already called Twig.js. I don't know if anybody's bothered to implement it in Drupal yet, but uh, hey, if you're looking for a contrib module idea, there you go. Another thing that's really neat, and I, I hate to say it, WordPress has kind of had it over us for a while, uh, but has always been doing it wrong. Uh, <laughs> basically, you can take your template and safely edit it in your browser now. You don't have to uh, come in from the back end and change the code uh, via FTP, via um, SSH, any, any, any way that you're, you're used to editing the code. You can actually do it through the browser and not have to worry about introducing security issues or uh, causing a whole bunch of problems as far as crashing the site. Um, I, I do believe there was actually a module out that does this already, but it, it still just kind of works with the PHP of the thing, and, and that's uh, obviously a security issue. Uh, Contemplate, I think, was the name of the module. But now I'm kind of looking forward to an update to that module where in Drupal 8 it'll be safe and secure, and you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, setting the whole thing on fire. Um, one other thing, and uh, this was something Jen kind of harped on and was excited about uh, when she ran this class. Uh, code no longer has to just go one direction, uh, which I, I totally thought this image was clever. I don't know. Anybody else? No? Okay. Uh, it's no longer one direction. Uh, you can actually have the Twig templates talk back to the, uh, the, the PHP of the site itself. And what that means is if you have a template that doesn't use uh, the main menu, as I'm sure if you've set up, if you've ever set up a template on on Drupal, uh, you've got a whole myriad of checkboxes on the back end that you could be like, oh, I want the main menu, I don't want the logo, turn those on and off. Well, in this case with Twig, if you take it out of the actual template itself, that template could then go back and tell. Uh, it's possible for that template to go back and tell the uh, Drupal core system that hey, this option isn't really available anymore. Uh, either remove it or disable it. Um, again, this is not something that's actually in place or planning on being in place, but it's something that is possible now that we're using Twig as a template engine um, and could be very cool if we actually implement it. All right. Uh, now that you kind of have a, a rough idea of what Twig is and how it's being used, 
uh, know that it can be extended. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can add to Twig, and some of them have already been added. Uh, for example, for Drupal itself, they have added uh, uh, some significant debug functions, and I'll sort of uh, try to demonstrate those. If you actually take a look at your settings.php in a Drupal 8 installation, uh, you've got all the standard options and everything, including your, your database setup and all that. But if you come down a bit uh, towards about the middle of the file, you'll see you've got twig debugging uh, and twig auto reload. Um, twig debugging is just this option right here. If you delete this, uh, you can see, and now that I think about it, this is exactly the reason that my little error message didn't show up earlier, so I guess I can demonstrate that. Yay! Uh, you can enable this option, and you will be able to get uh, debugging information within the page. Uh, that doesn't sound terribly significant, and you won't be seeing an obvious change unless one of your templates is broken. So let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. Sorry. Security, folks. <laughs> So we've got twig debug on, and let's go ahead and try breaking one of these templates again. And of course that doesn't work. Um, all right, well, there is another cool thing I can show you actually, or a couple different cool things. If you take a look at the actual backend code of the page and check out uh, these comments, Twig, once you have debug on, will actually have uh, the exact templates that are theming that particular section of HTML. So every component that's, every, every template that's being touched will be shown within your HTML source to let you know exactly where that HTML came from. And that's a very exciting thing because if you've ever tried to track down, you know, like a little squiggly bar that's in a theme already, you, you, uh, need to know exactly where that's coming from, otherwise you're never going to be able to get it out. Um, another thing Twig Debug allows you to do, let's see here, that again may or may not render, is use a function called dump. Uh, and dump is going to look familiar to most of you. Uh, dump essentially is your uh, DSM, your DPM, your print R of your entire variable, that sort of thing. Let me see if I can just clear the cache here. Working on a small screen here. Good. All right. Suffice to say, it's it's going to be like a print R right now, if you just printed out a variable, uh, they're working on styling it so that it doesn't look awful, uh, and so that it'll actually appear more like a DPM or a DSM uh, if you're used to using Devel. Uh, and so what that means is you'll get the whole ordered organization uh, in a nice little convenient drop-down section looking at uh, what's within whatever variable. Um, the dump itself can also be set up to dump specific elements within. Uh, that entire page, you know, you just fill out what, what you actually want to dump. If you want to see what's in the content, you would say dump content uh, and get that output. But uh, it's, uh, it's still kind of a work in progress, as I said, and soon it'll be very powerful, but uh, right now you just get all, all, of, the, all of the stuff that you uh, are not sure what's, what's totally in there. Um, oh, actually, there was one other thing. Uh, twig auto reload is probably the other reason my uh, templates aren't working. Uh, if you comment this out, uh, it's going to be the one that decides whether or not you'll be reloading the template every time you refresh the page. Um, so these two, twig auto reload and twig debugging, are going to be pretty core to actually developing a theme if you're trying to reach out and figure out what's within the template at any specific time. Um, I'm told that Twig Cache is a little bit more dangerous and really won't really help you out unless you want to see your site go really slow. Uh, so don't don't really use that. Just uh, try to stick to Twig Auto Reload and Twig Debug uh, to uh, see how your site looks. 
Now I just want to see if the DSM works. Oh, denied still. All right. Moving on. All right, extending twig, uh, still, uh, we've got the filters and the functions. Um, those are going to be the two largest ways that you uh, extend twig. Uh, basically, you would do it in much the same way you would add a, uh, a menu element and a hook. There's going to be a function, and you'll just drop in uh, a hook function, rather, and you'll just drop in new functions or new filters that you need, uh, and then do a callback function to uh, establish what they actually do. Uh, filters, as I've kind of shown you, uh, are added with just a pipe. Uh, you can also have filters that would be entered with uh, arguments after them. So it would be pipe, and the name of the filter, and then a pair of parentheses around whatever argument you're passing to it. Um, filters can be done in a block, so you can do them around an entire section of code, uh, as I mentioned with the escape function. Um, functions actually are a little bit different. Uh, they, they work exactly like you would expect uh, PHP functions to work uh, in that it'll just operate whatever code uh, is on the back end of the callback. Um, I won't get too deep into these, uh, mostly because I don't know exactly how they work uh, and haven't written a whole bunch myself, but uh, suffice to say, Twig is incredibly extensible. It just matters uh, how much effort you want to put into it. Uh, finally, I kind of want to go over the roadmap for Twig. Uh, Twig is really the beginning of a, a push to make the development environment on the template side, the theme side, a little bit easier for uh, anybody to get into and, and start to produce. A big part of the uh, push to Twig is to actually, uh, well, let me, let, me, let me start out by saying this. You have two different ways of modifying content and changing how the output looks in Drupal 7. You've got these templates, uh, which we've been talking about, and then you've also got theme functions. Theme functions are really just designed to be a uh, developer's way to modify markup without actually having to get into a template or create a template. Um, they're nice to have, but they've proven to be very confusing for anybody that's actually developing a theme. Um, you can't override them very easily. Uh, in the way that you can templates. You can't find them very easily all the time in the way that you can templates. Um, so there's going to be a big push, uh, and there has been already, to take all the theme functions and turn them into templates. Uh, templates are going to be the thing if you want to change the markup of your site. Uh, along the same lines, they're looking to reduce the number overall of theme functions and templates. So you've, you've got this big push to uh, pull out all these theme functions, and then you've got this big push to reduce the number of templates as well. Um, and the goal there is to reuse as much code as possible throughout core. There's a lot of implementations that are, you know, from separate initiatives in core that don't reuse code they probably should. You know, there's probably eight or nine different ways to render markup for a list, for example. Uh, they're trying to push towards making things like that reusable uh, for both core and contrib modules. Later goals include getting rid of render entirely, and that's not entirely true. Uh, they do kind of want to have render, they just don't want it to be visible on the side of whoever's making the theme or the template. Uh, you, if, if you've ever tried to use render, it's a lot of arrays, and you don't always know what's in them, and as I mentioned before, documentation for them is sparse at best. Uh, there's probably a handful of people that are experts with them, but I don't know any of them. Uh, so uh, getting rid of render is, is a, a pretty good high priority, but really they're just moving it to the back end. Uh, you've seen how Twig can take anything and just output it the way it needs to be outputted. Um, that's effectively going to take over for what render did. It's going to take a look at whatever the data structure is and just uh, plop out whatever content needs to be rendered. On top of that, they're also trying to get rid of theme functions entirely. Um, that uh, goes along with the whole push to templates. Uh, once they can get theme functions out, that's going to clean up their, uh, the, the whole Drupal rendering stack quite a bit and make things hopefully faster. Um, 
And then this was a, a piece that they, uh, Jen Lamp and friends actually described as part of uh, uh, the roadmap towards Drupal 9, uh, but they're looking to replace pre-process hooks with something better. Uh, pre-process pre hooks are going to be what actually deliver the content to the variables uh, that are going to be in the themes right now, um, but there's a problem with them in that the pre-process hooks actually stop uh, the building of the content. They, they stop the whole movement of the site to collect all this data that it doesn't use. So the idea is they want to find something better that doesn't have to collect all this data that's unnecessary. Um, you know, you don't need a whole node if you're just trying to render something for uh, a view, for example. Uh, so the, the ultimate goal is uh, replacing preprocess hooks. They don't quite know what with yet, but they're, they're working towards that. All right, and I think that's about it for me. Um, I, I hope I've actually uh, described what Twig is and uh, gotten some of you excited about uh, where it's going, what it's doing. Uh, are there any questions? Sure. I, I guess uh, the the question is, uh, will will Twig really know if it needs to if present a a video or text or or an image? Um, it goes a little bit narrower than that multimedia sort of sort of look. Uh, you're not going to be able to drop in a, a YouTube URL, for example, and it'd be able to figure that out. Um, more likely, you'd be able to pass a YouTube URL to, say, a block of code that a block of markup that describes a, a YouTube embed. Um, so it's it's not really that high level. It's going to be a lot lower level than that. Any other questions? Extending other templates? Yeah. Uh, um, to be honest, I, uh, the question is, uh, how does Drupal handle extending uh, uh, like core templates, essentially? Um, I, I believe it's along the same lines as uh, well, I, I guess uh, I'm trying to figure out what you mean by extending because uh, the, the Drupal concept of core templates hasn't really changed. You're still going to have the same set of core templates you had in the past. They're just going to be in Twig. Um, and if you're going to extend them, uh, you're going to just be replacing code. Are you talking about like overriding them uh, in, in maybe like a theme? Mm. Uh, you're you're basically going to use it the same way you use Drupal templates right now. Um, you saw the uh, the naming conventions on uh, on my uh, Node templates here. They're they're not really any different. So. Uh, if you want to do a an override uh, based off of uh, you know a specific content type, you'd still do the dash dash and and override that specific template. If you want to do an override of the core template of Node, uh, you just have a theme that has a Node template in it. Um, so so that's not really going to change. Um, as far as if you built out an entirely new Native Symphony app, uh, I'm not really sure how that works, honestly. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I can tell you that it. Uh, remains pretty much the same between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8. It's just the file type of the markup that changes. Any other questions? Sure. Mm -hmm. Um. Like uh, just adding, like uh, so. The question is, uh, do we have any any more advanced examples of uh, uh, templating based on uh, fields within nodes and uh, fields within uh, or, or images? You said uh, styling and that sort of stuff. 
I don't have any great examples on me, honestly. Um, the the best examples that I have are probably going to be uh, just using um, like this node temple, node template rather. Uh, if you've got the content, you can fish out the comments, you can fish out the links, that sort of thing. Um, there's there's better resources out there, honestly. Uh, you you could look into the Twig documentation, but I, I know a lot of Jen's talks uh, cover more specific field handling, um, which are uh, most of which are available on YouTube. Um, but uh, I don't really have any great examples for you right now, unfortunately. Right. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, these, these, uh, yeah, um, and actually we could try to pull up uh, just a basic field template um, if I can find my applications here. Uh, we'll take a look in core and see if we can't fish out uh, some templates in here. So you can see here, you know, you've got your, your standard attributes, you've got your standard uh, label hidden title attributes. Um, and then you've got the for loop that, that goes through the delta like the, the traditional field template does. So, so really this, this does extend, you know, all the way down. Uh, it's, it's turtles all the way down um, as far as how deep Twig is going with this. Uh, you've got your field templates, which are going to be the same way. You've got your, your views templates, which will also be set up the same way. And it's really, you're, you're, you're using the same sorts of structures that you had in a PHP template. You're just going to be switching it to this different markup that's a little more secure and uh, hopefully a little easier to code too. Does that answer your question? Okay. Anyone else? Sure. Um, the, the question was, is there a, a place in PHP where these uh, template variables are defined? Uh, it's, I, I can't rattle them off off the top of my head. Uh, I know that if you want to modify them, you're probably going to end up writing preprocess functions. Um, and if uh, you're used to, for whatever reason, uh, views is a great example. I used to code views all the time where there was some logic within the actual templates themselves. If you're used to that sort of, uh, computational logic being present in, in views that you're going to have to learn to write some preprocess functions and I wish I prepared some slides for that specifically but uh, yeah that's that's how that's eventually uh, how that's supposed to work rather um, that logic is going to be pulled out of the templates themselves and moved into PHP good Yeah, yeah. All of, all of those templates. Um, in fact, I, well, I'm not going to try to wrestle with views UI on this tiny window, but uh, <laughs> but you can see that uh, these templates. You know, this is uh, the if you if you're familiar, familiar at all with the views uh, individual field template. This is basically it. You know, you go in and it says PHP print output. Uh, this is the same thing. Um, so if you want to. Uh, you, you, it's got that theme identification button uh, where you can refresh the, the template cache if you need to. It's going to be the same thing. The replacement of theme functions uh, and the movement of those to uh, actual templates, that they're trying to get done for Drupal 8. Um, I don't think that's going to be 100%, honestly, uh, but they, there's definitely progress in the initiative. Uh, as far as removing preprocess and replacing that with something hopefully a little bit nicer, that's not slated for Drupal 8 at all. Uh, that's sort of a pipe dream right now that's going to be Drupal 9, if anything.
Right. Anyone else? All right. Well, thanks for coming to my talk. I, I obviously have never uh, done one of these before. Uh, <laughs>